Yo, what's up, beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome to Dom's Media Zone. This is video number 51 on my channel and we are reaching a thousand subscribers. So I just wanted to say thank you so much to each and every one of you that has subscribed. Thank you for your support. You are much appreciated. In today's video, we're talking about taking photographs with a method called focus bracketing. And then we're going to use Canon's Digital Photo Professional 4 to combine those images together and create one perfectly sharp image. This is called depth compositing in DPP4. I'll show you this tool and I'll show you how to use it. I'll also show you what focus bracketing is and how to take focus bracketing photos using a Canon camera. So I'm using the 90D camera, but I'm sure the process should be more or less similar to most of the other cameras. So if this is something that interests you, stay tuned and enjoy. Firstly, let's talk about what focus bracketing is. So focus bracketing is basically you instructing the camera to take a series of photos with the focus distance settings increasing with each photo that you take. These series of photos later on are then merged using software like DPP4 to create one image that is perfectly sharp from beginning to end. So when I talk about depth compositing, that's the process of using Canon's DPP4 to combine the photos together. When I talk about focus bracketing, that's the process of actually taking those photos using your camera. So I'll show you an example of using this ball. This will be our subject for today because it's quite easy to show you guys exactly how it works using this object because it's round. Now, before we dig in and take photos of this ball, you need to understand what depth of field is in order to understand focus bracketing. So I'm going to show you an image on the screen right now just to try and understand. So over here, this is an image of a photography app that I have downloaded that kind of calculates the depth of field. And I thought it would be a really good idea just to show you guys what I mean. So I'm using a lens that's a 50 millimeter lens for this exercise. And then over here in this app, we can basically specify the aperture, which is the f-stop. So let's say, for example, we were using an aperture of two and our lens is 50 millimeters and our distance from the subject is about one meter. So you can see over here underneath it says depth of field. If my camera's one meter away from the subject with these settings on top here, so the very low aperture, you'll see this little thin line here that would be the depth of field. Now, because we're so close to the subject with a small aperture, the depth of field is very narrow. So if we wanted to take a photo of a subject that's completely sharp, so this field here will be sharp. This little section over here will be very sharp. Everything else will be blurry. So that means that only this thin strip will be sharp. Everything is blurry. So if we wanted to capture this subject here, we could either increase the aperture to make the depth of field a bit bigger, or we could take this focus bracketing exercise that we're going to do now and take a series of photos. And what that would do, this sharpness line would then with each photo move a bit further. And then when we combine them, we'd have all this sharpness combined that would be in the depth of field over here. I hope that makes a bit of sense. Let's jump back to the ball. I'll try to explain it a bit better. So for example, if we wanted to take photos of this ball, with a very shallow depth of field. So let's say we're using a stop of f1.8 because that's the lowest that my lens will go up to. So the first photo that we would take would probably be sharp over here only in the front because the depth of field that is sharp is very narrow. So think of this ball getting sliced up into pieces basically. And then the first photo's piece will be sharp. Then with the next photo, this piece will become blurry, but the next piece will become sharp. With the next photo, the first two pieces are blurry, the third piece is sharp, and so on, depending on how many photos we set the camera to take. So if we take eight photos, for example, you can think of it as dividing this ball into eight, and then each photo will have its own section that's super sharp. The rest of the sections will be blurry. And then when we use depth compositing in DPP4 to combine all these photos, you'll get all eight photos sharpness in one photo. That's kind of the best way I can describe this. There's one more photo I can show you guys that might help you understand this. And then the practical example should make sense once we do that, then I'll demonstrate how the photos actually came out 
and you'll see that in practice. So let's have a look at the next photo here in the computer. So over here you can see another good example they demonstrate. So this is the f-stops or the aperture. So the lower the aperture, the more your shutter is open, but that creates a shallower depth of field. So the lower aperture creates a shallow depth of field, whereas the higher aperture, the more your lens is closed, it creates a bigger depth of field. So for example, have a look at this little man over here. He wants to take a photo. There's a flower, there's a, looks like a moose and some trees at the back. If he's got a very small f-stop like f2.8, a very small area will be in focus. In this case, only the flowers and the rest of it will be blurry. So this is the depth of field. So the smaller your aperture, the smaller the depth of field and also the closer you are to the subject. So if you're taking macro photography where you're very close to a subject, the depth of field will become even narrower over here. That's why we need to take a series of photos to get the image at the end super sharp. And as you can see now, when the f-stop increases, the depth of field increases. So he's got the moose and the flowers in focus. And the last photo is at f11 so it's a bigger f-stop and then you've got all this in focus which is your depth of field will then be the flowers the moose and the trees behind because now we've created a big depth of field but for macro photography where you want the whole subject to be kind of super sharp you might need to take separate photos to do that and that's because you are super close to the subject so you need a couple of photos now before i jump in to show you how to take photos using focus bracketing Here's what the Canon DPP-4 guide says about using the depth compositing tool. First thing to note is that not all cameras are supported with raw images. So if you are taking raw images or your CR3 or CR2 images, only these cameras here will be supported by Canon DPP-4. But that's not the end of the world because DPP-4 depth compositing is also compatible with JPEGs and TIFF images and all cameras that are compatible with DPP-4 will work with JPEGs or TIFF images. So if you've got a camera that's different to one of these, take JPEG images to do this exercise and it should work in Canon DPP-4. It also specifies the lenses that are compatible and also the supported file formats. And also they do give us some cautions when shooting images for depth compositing. Basically they are saying for best results set the aperture in the range of f5.6 to 11 before shooting. Well I haven't done that. I've tried at 1.8 just to show you guys how this works in a practical way. And also they do recommend which is something I think you do have to do is use a tripod and lock the camera firmly in place before shooting. So you don't want any movement happening while you're shooting these photos. So do use a tripod. All right, now that we understand what focus bracketing is, let's jump into how to take these photos using your camera. All right, now to show you guys how focus bracketing can be done on a Canon camera. So this is the Canon 90D and I have it pointed at a subject in which case today I'm using a miniature football or soccer ball, depends what you want to call it. And I'm going to put the Canon 90D to on and I'm going to make sure it's in photo mode. So once you're in photo mode, what you want to do is hit the start and stop button again to go into the live view mode. So this setting for focus bracketing can only be found in the live view mode on these cameras. I don't know why, but that's where it's located. So once you're in there, hit menu and then on the first tab, the red tab, keep scrolling to the right hand side until you find the sixth tab, which is the last tab. The first thing you'll want to do is disable continuous autofocus. Now don't forget to enable it once you're done again, but for the purpose of this exercise, because we want to take a couple of photos with the focus bracketing on, so it will focus on different aperture zones, I'm going to disable the continuous autofocus. So now I'm going to go one back to the fifth tab. So now we're on the fifth tab and over here you can see focus bracketing and it's set to disabled. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and switch it to enabled. So go ahead and enable focus bracketing bracketing and then number of shots, click on this. You can actually change how many photos you want the camera to take. So let's maybe try with eight shots. Let's see what happens. The last time I tried was with six. So let's try with eight today. And I'm going to be happy with that. And then I'm going to click OK. Now over here, you get something called the focus increments. This little tool tells us how much focus do we want to move by each shot. So if you don't want to move by a lot, or if it's like a macro photography where you've got a really tiny subject, 
try to go narrow so somewhere maybe like two or three that would be good if you've got something that's quite big like a big subject you can go up to about 10 so that will make wider focus increments in our case it's a little miniature football so it's not really macro i'm just going to go for about six or seven let me try seven actually maybe six six should be good enough say okay exposure smoothing i'm just going to leave that at enabled and then i can go back to my main menu over here now you'll notice in this little top left hand side corner it tells you how many photos it's going to take so in my case it's going to take eight photos because that's what i set it on my f-stop is on 1.8 so i've got a pretty narrow depth of field over here at f1.8 so the front of the ball is where i want to focus i've got my focus thing switched on and now i can hold down the shutter button focus on the middle of the subject and go ahead and click now you're going to see it's taking a while and boom it took all eight photos at a different focus. So you can see the last photo here shows up and the front is kind of blurry. So now that we've taken all eight photos, you can actually preview them in here. So you can see the first one, you won't be able to see here. I'll show you these on the screen in a second. The first one, the front is really sharp and focused. And as we go to the eighth photo, it gets blurry, but the background gets nice and sharp. So that's our example for today. So let's jump into the computer now and have a look how this came out. All right, now that we've taken our photos, let's have a look at them one by one just to show how it looks on the actual photo. So here's our first photo we took. And as you can see, the front is super sharp, this Adidas sign and the Euro 2020. But as we go further away from that center piece or center slice where the camera focused, it gets more blurry and more blurry and more blurry. And you can see the background is completely blurry at 1.8. We go to the next photo and the next photo, you can see this now slowly starts to become more blurry, but then the outer slice becomes a little bit more sharp now this is in focus and this starts getting blurry as i move along with the images you can now see this is very blurry and it gets sharper on the outside and if i carry on all the way to the last image basically you can see the ball itself is super sharp around the edges but the whole of the center is blurry and now the background is becoming sharper and the front is becoming blurry this is the last photo we've got so that's eight photos in total that we've taken and now we're going to jump into DPP4 and show you how to combine these eight images to give us one super sharp image. All right, here we are in Canon's Digital Photo Professional 4. And as you can see, I've put my photos into a folder called Focus Bracketing. I've done both the CR3s, which are my RAW files and the JPEGs. They both work, so you can use either one. I'm going to use the RAW files because the Canon 90D is one of the supported cameras. So the first thing you want to do is have a look at your photos. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight photos, everything we've taken just now. And what I'm going to do is hit Control A to select them all, or alternatively, you can just kind of drag your mouse over and select all the photos. Make sure all your photos are selected and then go over here into Tools and under Tools, you're going to see something called Depth Compositing. So under here, you're going to find a section that says Start Depth Compositing Tool and go ahead and click on it. This will open up another window that says Performing Depth Compositing from 8 Images, adjust what you need. Now you can leave these at defaults. I do strongly recommend setting this Auto Brightness Adjustment. This is just in case one of your photos brightness is slightly different to the rest. This will automatically match them up for you. Here you've got the amount of bokeh, so you're specifying how much bokeh is in your image. My images, I want it to be very sharp and there wasn't that much bokeh in the background, so I'm just going to drop this by maybe one. Next thing they say, weighted towards nearer subjects, so specify larger values where nearer and farther subjects overlap. Now, I don't have subjects overlapping, I've just got one subject, so over here I can actually remove that completely. And then smoothness of compositing boundary, do I want it to be smooth? Specify larger values to make the compositing boundary smooth. I'm just gonna leave that in the middle. And then over here, you can select where your output file will be. So where will be the image that is created right at the end? I'm just going to leave it into the same folder where my CR3 files are so that we can compare. And then once you're ready, just hit on execute. And do keep in mind, this can take some time because it goes through each one of the images and stacks it on top of the other one. So let's go ahead, click execute. Now it says you're saving an image in the same folder. Yes, it's just giving you a warning it may take some time do you want to start yes now as you can see it started the process here and i might just skip this forward so you don't have to watch this to the end
Alright, now that we've hit the end, you're gonna see that it's finished, it's 100% done, but because we didn't check this closed dialog box when finished, it's still got this open, so you can just go ahead and click on exit. And now that we've clicked on exit, if we scroll down, you're going to see there's an additional photo, which is a JPEG photo, which is our final image that's been photo stacked so let's double click to open it and have a look and look at that the whole ball is in focus you got the front you got the mid pieces it's stacked all eight images to give us this final image from all eight now i think that looks pretty damn good and i'm happy with the result there's one more thing i'd like to show you so say you wanted to change some things about this image there's one more tool i'd like to show you so if we go ahead and select the final image that just came out click on tools depth compositing and then start depth compositing editing tool so if i go ahead and click on this editing tool you can see here on the right hand side it shows us the final image that we've just created and then down here it shows us all eight images that we used so if i click on the first one as an example you can see the first one was very blurry in the back and very clear in the front so the front matches that then you can click on the second one and basically see how the focus changed all the way to the last one which was very blurry in the front but the back was super sharp that's where it gave it that so now just to show you what this tool can do say for example we're looking at this image and we're very happy with the whole front but say you wanted to blur the outer part of the ball a little bit more like it is here but leave all this super sharp what you could do is then select the image you want to copy from so in this case our first image where the background was blurry and then you're going to set your adjustment area so click on this button here and you'll see this little cursor moving with the wheel over here you're setting the radius so how big do you want this cursor to be unfortunately this is as big as it goes and then the blur radius you can select to create these two kind of circles so the in the middle circle the very inner circle will be the radius that copies from the left picture to the right picture and the blur radius will be just kind of like the outer part where things might get a little bit blurry so i'll show you how that works so let's say we want to blur the edge again if i click down you can see now is blurring the edge so it's basically copying from the image that we have selected on the left hand side and making the changes to our final image so if i wanted to blur the background but not necessarily sure i do because i think it looks quite cool and it's super sharp but just so you know how this works there we go i could do something like that where it took the blur from this image and copied it over now if i wanted to blur the adidas sign for example i can't do it from this image because it's already sharp in this image so i'd have to jump to the last one where adidas part is blurry and then copy it from there see so i can blur the adidas sign if i wanted to if i don't want to i can just undo that by right clicking on my mouse to come back to these controls and then hit the undo button that's kind of what you can do using this tool you can set more blurry parts so say for example you don't want the wall to be as sharp as it is you could do the same thing set adjustment area and start blurring say the bottom floor you don't want this shadow to be in focus so you could do that and blur the background a bit more if you wanted to so i'm just going to close this and do you want to save the image i'm going to say no because i'm quite happy with the initial image that came in and there you go you've got your image back here under jpg so this creates a jpeg so if you've combined all the cr3 files this will create a jpeg image now just keep in mind that if you want to edit a jpeg image in dpp4 your functionality is very very limited i'm not sure you can actually do much with this afterwards here you might need to use a different software let's see what it can actually do it doesn't have brightness it doesn't even allow you to select contrast and all those things so that's really one thing i don't like about dpp4 is that it limits your functionality on jpegs it's more to do with your raw files that's where the power of canon digital photo professional 4 lies and that's all i got for today i do hope you enjoyed this tutorial i hope it helps you out and i hope it taught you something new so if you did like this do give me a thumbs up and as usual if you're new to this channel do subscribe hopefully i'll have many more cool videos to come in the future thank you for watching take care stay safe and goodbye